Hey guys, I'm really excited today to share with you my thoughts on one of the most innovative Apple products ever created. It rounded out a new line of displays that Apple had just released. A 23 inch display, a 20 inch display, and then this 30 inch monster display. This monitor was released on June 28, 2004 and was discontinued on July 27, 2010. If we do the math, 2020 minus 2004. Dude, that makes this monitor, that makes this monitor 16 years old. Ooh. Check it out. 30 inches of creative space to work from. Isn't she beautiful? This display released in 2004 is a professional quality wide format active matrix LCD with a jaw dropping 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution. For 2004, this is unheard of. This is the largest high resolution display ever created at that time. This offered creative professionals and prosumers the highest quality flat panel display in the industry. Also at the time it featured one of the first DVI connections ever created. At the time it worked with the latest Power Mac, PowerBook systems, as well as PCs with DVI connection. And man, at the time it was unbelievable, but you could put two of these 30 inch displays side by side and drive them simultaneously on Apple's new Power Mac line. This offered creative professionals a desktop experience of 8 million pixels. As said by Steve Jobs at the time in 2004, our gorgeous new 30-inch cinema display is the largest desktop canvas ever created. And you can even run two of them side by side to get 8 million jaw-dropping pixels. Apple cinema displays have always set the bar for the industry's highest quality displays and our new 30-inch display is a giant leap forward for our pro customers. This new 30-inch display featured an all-aluminum design with a very thin bezel for 2004, suspended by an aluminum stand with an adjustable hinge. And that hinge really made tilting the display almost effortless, as you can see. Each cinema display featured two Firewire 400 ports and two USB 2.0 ports. So at the time, this really started to become a hub for all your peripherals. You could hook up your mouse to it, your iPod, your original iSight camera. Do you guys remember these guys? I happen to have one right here. You could hook up hard drives to it. You could hook up your printer to it, your scanner. It was really quite accessible and convenient. Apple's new family of displays featured the first ever 16 by 10 ratio coveted by creative professionals who wanted access to more horizontal space on their canvas. It's just unbelievable to think that a display in 2004 hit the 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution mark. This display was perfect for creative professionals demanding accurate color and the maximum amount of viewing angle at 170 degrees. This wide color gamut offered creative professionals edge-to-edge -edge accuracy. These Apple flat panel displays were certified by SWOP as part of the ICS Remote Director product. The first display-based proofing system created to approve jobs for press production on screen without the need for hard copy proofs, an innovation that can result in significant time and cost savings for print professionals. You know, in terms of color reproduction, I cannot say enough about this monitor. It color calibrates really well, so I recommend getting a color monkey or an eye profiler and setting that to D65 and doing a kind of a normal calibration on your, on your monitor. When I use this monitor on my 16-inch MacBook Pro, 
um, as a dual display monitor, I can work on this too and have uh, some windows over here. As a full-time graphic artist, I can tell you firsthand that having a 30-inch monitor to proof your CMYK pre-press projects before they go to print is unbelievable. And for photography, photo processing, it is clutch, man. I can't say enough about having a 30-inch canvas. Actually, in my opinion, this monitor has a very cinematic feel to it. It really still holds its own in terms of creative reproduction for anyone that's a creative that works in film, photography, or graphic design. This monitor, I think, is still a benchmark. There's something just so fulfilling and joyful to know that you're working from a piece of technology that has the care and design aesthetic built into it, into its very soul, that makes you want to create. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting in front of a plasticky monitor that's wobbling that just frustrates you and you just don't even want to work on that. And then you pull up your work that you've painstakingly tried to capture, whether no. it's photography or graphic design, <laughs> and the colors are, are off, and you've worked so hard on calibrating that <laughs> monitor, but it just doesn't look right. It, what's so cool is, too, is it's so seamless. Even looking at a piece of tech from 2019 right here, this 16-inch MacBook Pro from 2019, and this ancient, ancient grandpa of a monitor from 2004, this 30 inch monitor and when you plug that into this it recognizes it as a cinema HD display. The fact that those talk to each other and still know each other as as technology kin is pretty cool. Granted make sure you have the right adapters to get these two to connect but once you get them to talk to each other they're best buds and that's pretty cool man. Yeah. So I'll have links in my description on the cables that you need, um, the power adapters, the dual link display, and once you have all that stuff, you can work with this on your MacBook Pro. Or if you have an old school Mac Pro or even a newer Mac Pro, it's actually a lot easier to connect that um, to those machines. There's actually a marked difference working on this display versus a 27 inch monitor. It sounds like three inches isn't a huge deal, but believe me it is when you're looking on this monitor and you're working. It's crazy to think that in 2004, this monitor, brand new retail, cost $3,299. I found this through Facebook Marketplace for $175. Yes! I would gladly pay that twice over, maybe even three times over rather than purchasing a brand new monitor. Because a lot of the monitors today, when you buy them brand new, unless, unless you really look for the 4K or 5K spec, you're gonna get a monitor that is 1080p. No. And sometimes you'll find a 1440p monitor. But that's what I love about these older, high-end Apple monitors. Oftentimes you can find them for super cheap and they're gonna serve you incredibly well for what they are. The definite thing to note about this monitor is it requires a dual link DVI connection. So be sure that you have the right connector. And I really recommend buying the genuine Apple dual link DVI connector. I did try something from Amazon that I thought would work, but it did not work great. And I returned that. Um, also be sure to use the original 150 watt power adapter. There is some talk online about using a hacked cheapo china made 150 watt power supply i found one of these generic 150 watt power supplies and did all the requirements on that but i did have one of the capacitors pop on me and that was kind of frightening and made a loud sound and i smelled some burning electronic smell so i just bit the bullet and found the original power supply on eBay. The weight of this display, it is pretty dang heavy, so be prepared. It's about 27.5 pounds, and in terms of dimensions, it's pretty big. So just keep that in mind as you're preparing your workstation. 
Those of us that grew up around Max are familiar with and have seen plenty of the 20 inch cinema displays that look just like this, but a lot smaller. It's actually pretty hilarious the first time you see one of these. It looks like one of the 20 inch displays just totally went to town on some steroids and worked out for a whole year and turned into this monster of a display. But I have to say, man, this display is one of the most gorgeous pieces of creative tech to work on. I've really enjoyed working on this monitor compared to every single monitor I've worked on. And as a graphics and photography professional, I've worked on all of them. I've worked on the LG 5K. I also work on, actively, a Thunderbolt display. I've got an LED 27 inch display behind me. Also have the LG 5K monitor. I've worked on several LG 4K monitors. So I've had a good range of monitors to work from. Not to mention the built-in display on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which is very high quality. And those of us that are used to seeing retina screens between our iPhones, our MacBook Pros, that may be one thing that you're concerned about is switching to a lower pixel density monitor. Always remember your viewing distance from where you are sitting. Once you put it at the distance, that you are going to work from, it's going to work very well for you. This monitor comes with my highest recommendation. If you can find one, definitely pick it up. Chances are that you'll find one for pretty cheap. I was really, really lucky to find one in the original box. It looked like it wasn't really used that much. And so at that price of 175, it didn't come with the Dual-Link DVI connector or the original power supply, so I had to find those separately on eBay. But as a package overall, once I had all of that purchased together, also just aesthetically, it really matches and goes along with all of my Apple peripherals and just my whole desk environment. Here. And so this has really become my day-to-day -day creative workflow monitor. I've got another video where I talk about the Apple Thunderbolt display, another incredible monitor that you should check out. And you can watch that video here. But also I really hope that you can subscribe to my channel. You can do that here. And be sure to hit the thumbs up and hit the bell so you can get notifications on the next time I release a video. Thank you guys so much for listening today and spending some time with me. And I hope you guys find the monitor you're looking for.